Hello students. We will be studying filtering data strings. In this topic we will understand how we can filter out the data from the strings and we will understand how the Bloom's filter is working. <music> First of all, we understand what is in by hashing and how universal hashing is helping us by understanding its advantages and disadvantages. Hash tables over other table data structure is speed, so it has a higher speed when the number of entries is large. The small number it doesn't work well. Hash tables are particularly efficient when the maximum number of entries can be predicted in advance so that the bucket array can be allocated once with the optimum size and the neighbor size. Disadvantages, difficult to implement as it's a very complex structure, a complex algorithm, so difficult to implement. Choosing an effective hash function for the specific application is more an art than a science. Because we are going to select the hash function, does this hash function is going to help the achieve the results or not? It's very difficult. So it's like an art. Maybe sometimes you have a um, perfect hash functions. But sometimes you don't have, you have to go for another iterations, another hash function. Applications. So application of filtering stream is email spam filtering. We know 1 million good email addresses. If an email comes from one of this, it is not a spam. If it is not coming from this, definitely we can categorize as a spam. Maybe that is a spam or not spam. That is a different question. But yes. If it is from the good faith, definitely we can say it's a non-spam. Another is a publishing the subscribe systems. We what we usually do is we visit some portals, some news articles, and they ask you if you want to subscribe, just enter your email ID and continuously we get these emails on our inbox. So you are collecting lots of messages from news articles, people express interest in a certain set of keywords. So based on that, we are sent emails by those systems. I don't know whether each message matches user's interest or not. If something is not matching with our interest, definitely we should categorize differently. The Bloom filter. Very important data structure. A Bloom filter consists of an array of n bits. Initially, all are set to 0. A collection of hash functions will be from h1, h2 and hk. So we have k numbers of hash function. Each hash function maps the key values to n buckets corresponding to n bits of each array. A set S of m key values. We have a set S whether all elements are present and we what we do is we are going to hash there. The Bloom filter allows through the all stream elements whose keys are in S while rejecting most of the stream elements whose keys are not in S. Let's understand the illustration of Bloom's filter illustration of bloom filter so we have a k independent hash function instead of one we are not selecting only one hash function so we have a three hash functions here say h1 h2 and h3 so s1 is the element which is given to the h1 so which is setting the this location then h2 set here and here now S2 is set to same location, but yes, the other two locations are different one. So it may be giving you same location, but yes, that's why we are not selecting only one hash functions. We are selecting k hash functions. Here the value of k is 3. So we have selected 3 hash functions here. False positive rate is a very low false positive rate because we are selecting more hash functions. There will not be false negative as at the beginning only we are setting complete array to the zero. Let's understand Bloom's filter by some example we have k is equals to 2 so that is we have two hash functions h1 of x is equals to x mod 5 and h2 x is equals to 2x plus 3 mod 5. Now initially we have set the complete array to the zero. Now we are going to insert the 9. If you take a 9 value and add here, it will be 9 mod 5, 9 mod 5. So, 
what is the remainder? Yes, we have remainder as a 4. Now 9 is added in 9 into 2, 18. 18 plus 3, 21. Mod 5, we get a remainder as 1. So the first element 9 is setting the 1 in the second position and the fifth position. Let's insert the element. 1 and 0. How we get this in 1 and 0? 11 mod 5, we get the remainder 1. And when writing a 11, 11 to the 22, 22 plus 3, that's 25. And mod 5, we get the result at 0. Now we are going to say. So this position, first position is again set. Double it is set. So and 0. So this 11 is set at two locations. 0 and 1. Illustration of blue script. Sorry, cut it. Now we are going to store the 15. 0 and 3. Now let's check it out the some number whether it shows the whether the element present or not. Let's check it out. So we are going to search for 15 whether 15 is present or not. Again same hash function is used. 15 mod 5 we get the 0. Okay that is the remainder. First position and 3. 3 how we get the 3 is 15 to 15 into 2, that's a 30, 38 plus 3, that is 33. Mod 5, we get the remainder 3. Now we go to check it out with the 0, 0th position, yes, 1 is there and 3rd position is 0 is there. It adds first position, maybe it is coming true, but it is coming false here. That's why 15 is not present. So that is correct result. Now we'll check with another number, that is 16. Now 16 is there, 16 mod 5, we get a remainder 1, that is the position 1, okay, which is set, which is coming as a true, okay. And see, uh, then we are writing a 16 into 2, 32, 32 plus 3, 35 mod 5, we get the result 0, that is also coming true. So 0 and 1 both are there, it's saying, yes, that is a false positive. But the false positive is coming here. The false positive is coming here. Let's understand the properties. If the query was inserted before, the Bloom's filter always return true. The no false negatives because we all are set. All the array are set to zero. However, it can return true for an element which was not inserted, which we have checked. Chances of false positive is very less if you are going to increase the number of hash functions and the last size of an array. So what are different applications of Bloom's filter? Google uses in the big, big table Apache BHBase, Apache Cassandra, PostgreSQL. These all are using the Bloom's filter. In a Google Chrome, it helps to find out whether the URL is malicious or not. Of course, Bitcoin, Venti, Medium, Ethereum, all are using the Bloom's filter. Specifically, I want to talk about the Ethereum user Bloom's filter for quickly finding the logs on the Ethereum blockchain. So in the blockchain also it is used. Bitcoin uses Bloom's filter to speed up the wallet synchronization. Weakness of Bloom filter or you can say disadvantages needs a full independent hash function. The space reduces is a 1.44x more than this information theoretically best possible. So that is one of the disadvantage. Dynamically growing Bloom filter is very hard because the size of an array is fixed at the beginning only. Base size depends on the false positive rate and the number of insertions. Let's understand the Bloom's filter analysis by some calculations. What fraction of the bit vector B are in R ones? So throwing a K dot M darts at the end target. Suppose there is one a dart game is there. And when we send some arrow towards it, so dart, we are sending dart or arrow. So in, in that particular scenario, we are understanding throwing k dot m darts at n targets, the n target. So fraction of 1 is 1 minus e raised to power minus k m by n. So but we have a k independent hash functions and we only let the element x through if all the k hash element x to the bucket of n. Take till the weaknesses and later on analysis is not needed. Okay. Thank you.